Well, good morning and welcome this morning to Calvary by the Sea. My name is Moses Barrios and I am the senior pastor of Calvary by the Sea, pronouns he, him, and his. I am indigenous, I am of Mayan descent, and it is good to be with you, whether you're uh, here in person or online. You must remember a few things that I always say, you probably already know them, but I'll say them anyways. You're welcome, you're loved, you're safe, and God is well pleased with you. This morning, our prayers are with the families of these individuals. Roberta Drury, Margus Morrison, Andre McNeil, Aaron Salter, Geraldine Talley, Celestine Cheney, Hayward Patterson, Catherine Massey, Pearl Young, Ruth Whitfield, and John Cheng. These are the 11 lives that were lost to mass shootings last week. I was just in Irvine, California this week for our annual gathering with all the pastors and two voting members from their churches. Nearly 400 people gathered in the space And I didn't hear one of these names mentioned. I lament that because just down the street from where I was gathering, where we gathered, is where this happened. Someone came into a family gathering, a church family gathering, celebrating a pastor and shot people. Buffalo, New York targeted people of black and African descent, shot them dead. And yet, we gather as a denomination, and we don't even lament that. Just another shooting, just another week in America. Today's wisdom derives from John's gospel, as Sherry read. We're thankful for that. And you know, this passage, it's nestled, I would say to you, in the middle of this dialogue that's happening between Jesus and his disciples. And he's talking to them about, essentially, I'm leaving, is what he's saying to them. It's a farewell dialogue. But Jesus is putting everything on the table. The essence of life, shall we say. If there was ever a moment to listen, this was it. And perhaps to oversimplify the matter, all that Jesus wanted his disciples to do was to keep and follow his commandments. Sounds very simple. Sounds very easy. How do we know that we are keeping God's commandments? Let me ask you that. How do you know that? Loving God and loving one another are some of the markers that are placed here by Jesus as a measurement, shall we say, of how to keep kind of a, 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 a measurement of our love for one another and for God or doing these commandments in this world. We know that these are fundamental things that are being described in this wisdom. And we know that Jesus asks his disciples for the very first time to love one another. They're a new mode of living, shall we say. But things like these were not natural things, clearly. If Jesus had to say, love one another, then perhaps it was not something that naturally was happening. The disciples were not naturally loving one another. This is why Jesus said, I give you a new commandment to love one another because apparently love was not flowing between these disciples. Jesus was asking them to practice something that was not natural, not something organic. It was not their practice. It was not something that naturally came to them. So Jesus was asking for something beyond themselves, 
to do something greater than themselves, to do something superhuman, shall we say. But let me ask you this, why is Jesus bringing this up towards the end of his time on earth? Why not bring this up at the very beginning of the story? Why not be this one of the first teachings that Jesus should have said, hey everybody, we need to learn to love one another. Instead, it's at the very end as Jesus is about to leave. And here is where the wisdom, I think, enters this morning. This is where I believe we can encounter the Holy Spirit. We can encounter God's presence. Whether you're here uh, for the first time or many times, whether you're a longtime member or a new member, that doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter the color of your skin, your ethnicity, your race, your gender, your identity. Because the universal truth that is here this morning is for all humanity. It just happens to be in this passage for the disciples. But it was what Jesus wanted all of his disciples, shall we say, to learn to do. Love one another. But there's something fascinating that maybe you missed because it's so subtle, it's so quick. Because Jesus goes on to speak about something very important. He says, how will you remember all of this? Because one thing I think we learned about our humanity is that we don't remember too well. We easily forget. And what Jesus wants the disciples to know is there is something that will remind you of this moment, of what I'm telling you right now. There is something that will remind you of this one day when I'm no longer here. He calls it the companion. Did you catch that? The Holy Spirit. In fact, he says that the Holy Spirit will remind you of everything. That I'm saying. Everything that I'm saying. In fact, it says that the Holy Spirit will teach you everything. It also says that. So don't you think that being connected to the Holy Spirit, to actually have the Holy Spirit in us dwelling and we're attentive to it matters? If it is the one thing that will guide us and remind us of what this moment is, of what love is, of what how it looks like, that we need that connection. See, I, I think today's wisdom is this. We need to learn to listen to the Holy Spirit, to the companion. Who teaches and reminds us of everything. The companion, the Holy Spirit will teach you everything. Will remind you of everything that Jesus told. This is the peace that Jesus leaves behind with his, with his disciples, right? Don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. Instead, the Holy Spirit, the companion will be with you, will remind you of everything, will teach you everything. Such a powerful thing, right? To remember. To learn to remember. Such a spiritual thing. The companion, the helper, the guide, the comforter, the, the counselor. That's what scripture speaks of when it's spoken about the Holy Spirit. These are the functions shall we say. But how can we remember if we're not in tune with the companion? How can we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit if we are not listening and discerning and perceiving the voice of the counselor? Let me tell you something. I grew up as a Pentecostal. <laughs> My mother would take me as a boy to her Pentecostal church. I know something about the Holy Spirit and about Pentecostalism. We're actually going to celebrate Pentecost Sunday, right? June 5th. Pentecostalism is a tradition that is centered on the filling of the Holy Spirit and the supernatural gifts, right? Uh, of speaking in tongues, of miracles. I mean, we could go down the list of those supernatural gifts. And I've seen the good, the beautiful I've seen the bad, I've seen the ugly of Pentecostalism. By the way, it's not just a Pentecostal issue. That, that's the same thing in an evangelical, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran church. But what's fascinating to me about that time with the Holy Spirit, that it was not so much about these supernatural gifts, even though that's where we put up all of our, of our attention as Pentecostals. But it was this understanding, this ability 
to be able to listen, to remember, to obey, to follow the voice of the Holy Spirit. That is what I would say is the essence, the goodness of the Pentecostal movement, that there was just this uh, affinity, this ability to listen clearly. When the Holy Spirit would say, do this, you would listen and you would do that. When the Holy Spirit would say, do that, you would clearly listen to it and you would do that. And there's something about Pentecostalism that we can learn today was actually a very beautiful thing that is a gift to the church, to the global church, the ability to listen, to follow, to remember, and to be obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit. But I guess what I'm saying to you this morning is that I spent three days with Shige and Phoebe, who are over here, Thank you guys for joining me. Brenda was with me as well. I spent three days at our Senate Assembly. But this is no ordinary Senate Assembly. This is three years since we gathered together. 2019 of May was the last time we gathered in person. And here we are three years later gathering for the first time. What an opportunity, right? To see what God has been up to the last three years in our congregations. To see... The, 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 the newness, the, the movement of the Holy Spirit in our congregations across the ELCA. That's our denomination. What has the ELCA become over the last three years? Pacifica Senate, what have we become over the last three years? Every pastor's there. All of their two voting members are there. We're electing a new bishop, a new person who will be in charge, right? Running and, and overseeing our, our Senate. What a beautiful opportunity. And there was much beauty in that gathering. But the representation in the room, now that was lamenting. Less than 5%, I would say to you, of the people in that room were of color. Did you hear me? Less than 5%. I would say even less than that of young people in the room. No mention of the LGBT community, no celebration, no acknowledgement. You see, these are the very communities that are missing from our congregations today. And yet we don't acknowledge, we don't even put them out there. See, the church, we talked about how the demise of it, the fall, the, the decline of it, as, it, as we continue to see it, we need to be awakened by the Holy Spirit this morning. We need to be awakened to the reality that there is communities and peoples who are not represented in the church. Where are our black community, our brown community, our indigenous communities? Where is our queer community, our young community? Where are they at? If I told you statistics of where those people groups and those ages are at today when in relation to the church. You wouldn't, first you probably wouldn't believe it, but secondly it would be very, very sad. By the way, I speak of the church this way, not because I have something against the church, it's actually because I love the church. See, I learned a long time ago that my kids, right, I have three of them, they're here, That because I love them, I need to say to them the things that are difficult to hear. It's easy for me to just say all the beautiful, easy things that, uh, that, that a dad could say. It's harder to say the things that they need to work on, the things they need to grow on, the things that need to improve. But that's also part of love. So when you love your neighbor, it's not just feely touching, you know, love. It's an actual... I'm, I'm trying here to help you. I'm trying to here to encourage you, but I'm here also to exhort you, to guide you, to speak into your life. That kind of love is the kind of love that we need in our world today. The love that looks at oneself and says, okay, what do I need to work on? What are things that I need to change? What are things that I need to grow in? It's too easy to dislike someone or to not agree with someone and to dismiss them. 
That is not the love of God, by the way. Oh, the love for one another that Jesus speaks about in this passage. The love that Jesus speaks about this passage is the love that will love someone regardless of the disagreements, regardless of what we don't like about that person. It's not about that. It's about loving someone in just how they are, imperfect. Because there's no such thing as perfect people. We love people despite their failures, mistakes, their transgressions, their, their, all the things that, are, that look negative, that look bad, all of those things, we love them despite all of that. That is the love that Jesus is calling his disciples to. But it cannot be disconnected from the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is what guides us today, is what leads us, moves us, speaks into us, reminds us of how to love one another. And despite what I saw this week, and I'm going to be honest, <laughs> I was not happy most of that gathering. How could I? I mean, I, I heard of, you know, a friend said, uh, told a story about how at the border of San Diego, how there are all these Central American and, uh, and, and Haitian refugees, immigrants who are at the border. And uh, the rhetoric is, we don't have time, it's too much, it's too hard to process all of these uh, people through, uh, through the asylum process. And then he mentioned that two weeks ago, Ukraine refugees arrived. And surprise, surprise, 750 of those Ukrainians got processed. Right through the board. You see the injustice. Do you hear the injustice? Or we could just act like it's just another week. It's just another shooting. It's just another thing. See, the church used to be at the forefront of these issues. It used to be the, the ones who would speak on behalf of these issues. Dr. Martin Luther King, up front. You know, and we've lost that today. We don't speak into those things anymore. But that's very much the love that Jesus is describing to us here through the Holy Spirit. It is supernatural love. It is beyond our capacity. How can you love someone you disagree with? It would have to be supernatural. It would actually have to be a holy presence inside of you calling you to love someone that is not organically and you're not naturally able to love. It is hard work to love someone that you don't agree with. That you don't see eye to eye with. About anything in life, by the way. And yet, that is the very love that's needed in 2022, I would say. If we cannot love like that, friends that we will continue to see the decline of this church, and not only of the ELCA, of every church. Yet, I say to you, there is hope. Because Jesus died on the cross for us, gave his life for us, gave his life so that we can have hope, so that we can have grace and life and joy and peace and healing and liberation. His resurrection gives us a new sense of life, a new opportunity every single Sunday to turn it around, to do better, to focus on ourselves. We understand that Jesus gave us salvation. I'm not saying you have to work for your salvation. You've got that. Everyone has got that. But it is, is a call to actually living out the commandments that Jesus said to you. And that's why he said to his disciples, keep my commandments. Love like I have loved you. This will be your peace. This will help you get through life. This will help you to not be afraid, to not fear anything. And so today, the Holy Spirit invites us once again 
into communion, into forgiveness, into reconciliation, into love, into hope, into joy. Perhaps our, our prayer this morning should be, Holy Spirit, come. But not just come into this world, but come into us. Dwell in us, move in us. To help us love the world, to love others. Even the ones that are hard to love. To love our enemy. That is a Jesus teaching. Love your enemy. Speak well of your enemy. Bless your enemy. Pray for your enemy. There's something there, friends, this morning that the Holy Spirit is telling us. I know that um, here at Calvary by the Sea, we are attempting to be a community that loves everyone. And that's why we put out a banner in front of our property so that everyone would know that. So that it would be very clear <laughs> that in this church we will love everyone. We will love our young people, our village elders. We will love our, our gay community, our trans community. We will love our black community, our indigenous community, our Asian community. We will love every single person. Because Jesus has taught us to keep his commandments, to love like he loved. But we need the Holy Spirit, the companion, the guide, the help, the comforter and the counselor to be with us. Friends, let us step into that this morning. Wherever you would go after today, that there would be this supernatural love birthing inside of you, sensing that I need to do this. I need to do this. It's not natural. It's not organic. It's not freely touchy. It's a choice I make today because the Holy Spirit inside of me is telling me to do this. I can listen clearly. I can follow. I can remember that someone loved me. So may we step into that this morning, church. We pray for these things in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.